quarterback competition, please. Good Wednesday morning to everybody here. This is Mac in the house, back with another video. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram, link in the box below. So, I just can't believe that this is still a topic of discussion, and this is still something that the Steelers are working for, because honestly, it shouldn't even be a factor at this point. Anyone who knows the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback situation, other than the fact that Kenny Pickett is going to be the starter for the whole season, knows what are who the backup should be. Okay? So apparently, you know, I, I, I saw this headline the other day. You know, I, I saw... Yeah, you know, I saw this headline the other day. And it made me laugh. It really did. Now, I'd like to clarify. In my recap that I had about the Bucks game Friday night, I said I wasn't going to get too analytical about the, the backup quarterback situation because, you know, like I said, it's low priority for us. We know Kenny Pickett's going to be the starter. But like I said, I saw this headline and it just made me laugh. Do we have quarterback competition on our hands? I guess we do, but it really shouldn't be, you know, a question. Because after looking at the tape and seeing who the clear winner at preseason opener was between Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett, it was, or uh, um, Mason Rudolph, I'm sorry, between those two, it wasn't even close. Mason owned him. I mean, it's been a full season since Mason Rudolph was the backup quarterback in Pittsburgh. And now coming into this summer, it felt like, it felt a little odd that he decided to return for another season. A lot of Steeler fans were like, you know what? We wouldn't blame Mason Rudolph if he just walked out the door. But, you know, hey, he's showing that he still wants to be on the team. All the power in the world to him. I respect people who fight for positions. I respect people who don't back down. So all the, world in the, so all the power in the world to Mason Rudolph for that. And while I certainly didn't assume that he was that he was going to get the offer that he was looking for in free agency, a lot of speculations are going around that he didn't get any offers at all, so it makes the most sense for him to just stay put for where he is. So heading into training camp, here's the big buzz. Can Tanner Morgan beat out Mason Rudolph? Probably not. But can Mason Rudolph beat out Mitch Trubisky? Absolutely he can, and he's he already did in my opinion. Mason did great Friday night too. 7 of 12, a buck 32 through the air, touchdown pass, a 67 yard bomb to Calvin Austin, and he even ran for 15 yards, including a solid effort to pick up a first down on a third down conversion. Meanwhile, what did Mitch do? 1 of 4, 10 yards, a pick, and a whopping goose egg for a passer rating. So you tell me who won the, the backup starting position. It shouldn't even be close. And, you know, I, I I just love how people go like, well, you know, Mitch Trubisky has been in the league longer than... Ma yeah, he's been in the league a full year longer than Mason Rudolph has. Well, um, you know, just be patient with Mitch Trubisky, you know. Just be patient with his play style. Guys... I am sick and tired of saying stuff like this. Mitch Trubisky has been in the league for six years. It's not like this is a 21-year-old we're talking about. This is a guy who is pretty much the same age as me, and with the way that he plays, you'd think that he is 21 because all he does is just run for his life, stares down receivers, and doesn't ever take his eyes off the first read. He is a one-read quarterback, and it showed Friday night. He did nothing Friday night. He literally had a passer rating of zero, and even going back to last year, there was a reason he got taken out halfway through the Jets game, because we were getting nowhere with him. Okay? I mean, it's, I mean, I'm coming on here. I'm not even hating on the guy. These are literal facts 
about Mitch Trubisky. Am I a big Mason Rudolph fan? No. But like I said, I respect people who don't lie down and die and just give up on the on, on their team. And you'd think us drafting Kenny Pickett and another quarterback, that'd be the end of Mason Rudolph. But no, he's here to at least stay with some kind of chance with the Steelers, man. And I respect him for it. And he's playing like it too because he played pretty well Friday night. Other than Kenny Pickett, he played pretty well Friday night. Mitch did squat for us. And like I said, I'm not even hating on Mitch. These are literal facts. It's not hating if I'm literally talking about what happened. Oh, but you only talk about the bad things about Mitch Trubisky. Well, what good is there to talk about him? I mean, it's like this. It's like this. I use this analogy all the time, okay? Say you're trying to lose weight. And say that when you're you're counting your calories, you only log the healthy stuff that you eat. Oh, well, I, I had, you know, yeah, I went to McDonald's and I had a Big Mac and a large fry and a chocolate shake. First of all, that's like 1,500 calories right there, okay? And that's well over... For a single meal, that's well over the amount of calories that you should be eating to sustain your body to lose weight, okay? Oh, yeah, I went to McDonald's and I had a Big Mac and a large fry and a chocolate shake. And then later on, I had a piece of birthday cake at my buddy's birthday party. And then I had, you know, two Pepsis at the party, too. Oh, but I'm not going to log that. I'm only going to log the broccoli and the spinach and the chicken breast and the cottage cheese and the Greek yogurt and the quinoa and the rice that I ate. I don't care if I ate over a pound of food in a day. I don't care if I ate 4,500 calories in a day. I'm just going to log all the good stuff that I ate. That's what. Pe and then you wonder why, when you weigh yourself, you wonder why you're not losing weight. It's because you're constantly eating too many calories that you need to eat in order to lose weight. You're exceeding it. And as a result, you're putting on weight. That's Mitch Trubisky. You wonder why he's not making progress because he has the same play style and he never goes through progression. Meanwhile, with Mason Rudolph, he does go through progression. So, I mean, you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, man, what competition is there between Mason Rudolph and Mitch Trubisky? There is none. Mason Rudolph has already earned the backup spot, and it's a slap in the face to him, to be honest. I mean, like I said, I'm not a big Mason Rudolph fan. I had a freezing cold take with him when, when we drafted him. That was on my old channel. That video's gone, but... You people that were there, you saw my reaction. I said he was going to be Big Ben's successor. Okay? It's obviously way too late for that. But Mason Rudolph is the longest tenured player on the Pittsburgh Steelers currently. And even though we don't see a whole lot of him, he at least goes through some kind of progression. So I say, what are you doing, Pittsburgh? Make... Mason Rudolph, the backup to Kenny Pickett, because you know what you have in Mason Rudolph. You know that he can take a shot down the field. You know that he can use his legs in the right way to pick up decent yardage and convert third downs. And you know that with Mitch Trubisky, he's just going to hold on to the ball too long and he's going to play it way too safe. Here's the difference between Mitch and Mason, okay? Mitch is afraid to make a mistake. He plays like it, too. He plays it safe. He's not a risk taker, and he plays it way too safe. He's like that he, He's like that boxer that goes in the boxing ring, and whenever he's going up against his opponent, he just does this the whole time. You know, he defends himself the entire time. He plays to not get knocked out. When you are a boxer in the boxing ring, because I use this analogy, too, being a quarterback is kind of like being an NFL quarterback is kind of like being a, a prize fighter in a boxing ring. When you're a quarterback, you have to be willing to get knocked out. You have to be willing to get put on your ass and take big hits. When you're a boxer, 
you have to be well conditioned, well trained, great shape, and you have to be willing to get knocked out. In order to knock out your opponent, you have to be willing to get knocked out yourself. Mitch plays it too safe. Like I said, he's like that boxer that just defends himself the entire time. And he plays just for points. Mason Rudolph is a risk taker. If you throw an interception, you know, if you're going for a long shot down the field and the defense and the defensive back makes a good play on it and he throws a pick, oh well, it happens. But when you try to force passes into double coverage and you know that you can see it like Mitch Trubisky does, it results in interception. That's not on the receiver, that is on the quarterback. But like I said with the former, when you take a shot down the field and the defensive back just makes a good play on it, you got to give credit to the defense. You throw a pick. Mitch Trubisky's too afraid to do that. So I don't know why we even have to go over this once again. Because we know who the better quarterback between the two is. And it's Mason Rudolph. I would actually feel somewhat confident if the Steelers are losing a game and Kenny Pickett gets injured and we have to put Mason Rudolph in. I, would, I wouldn't feel very confident, but I'd feel way more confident with him than I'd do with Mitch. Because Mitch, Mitch doesn't have that drive. He don't play with ice in his veins. He, he's, if you're saying, yeah, you know, the Steelers are down seven points and we need a game-tying touchdown and, you know, under the two-minute warning, yeah, put the ball in Mitch Trubisky's hands, you are either lying or you are not watching him play, one or the other. Because I, will, I, have no, I, have, I do not have that sense at all with Mitch Trubisky. When Big Ben was here, okay, when the Steelers were losing late in the fourth quarter and we needed a big drive... Even if the Steelers lost the game, I always felt like with Ben out there, I always felt like we were going to win. Even if we lost, I always felt like we were going to win. Because Ben played with ice in his veins. Ben was clutch. He liked playing with pressure. He had he had over 50 fourth quarter game winning drives in his career. He's top five in that category all time, actually. I don't get that sense at all with Mitch. I'm starting to get that sense with Kenny Pickett because he did it five times last year. But we're trailing in the fourth quarter with Mitch Trubisky. I'm saying the game's over. This guy can't do that. He just can't. So, anyway, 13 minutes in. I've rambled in long enough about this. We all know who the, you know, we all know what this competition is all about. And I put that in quotation marks because it's barely a competition and we, we know what the answer is. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. This is Mac checking on out for the day. Have a good one, everybody.